Hello, everybody. This is Tom Eckert here. You're listening to my podcast, Numerology, a GPS for the soul. This is your place to learn about the true power of numerology and how to use it to bring out the best in yourself, understand your loved ones better, take wise decisions, and prepare for your future. In other words, how to live your life aligned with your true destiny. Take your time to educate yourself and share these podcasts with your friends and family so they too can enjoy the great benefits of numerology. Enjoy! Hello to all my listeners! I'm very, very delighted and happy to record today's episode um, all about diving deeper into the karma of beloved number six. But, as always, and before I start diving into the deep waters, I want uh, to say for all the newcomers, for all those of you who are new to this podcast, first of all, welcome. And secondly, I want you to know that here we discuss numerology in an in-depth way, as a path for inner transformation, a path for inner growth, self-understanding, self-knowledge. My approach as a numerologist is to make numerology accessible and applicable for everyday life. And my goal is to also have as many people educate themselves with numerology so that we can make our lives and the world a better place. So having said that, there are some cool things you should know uh, if you want to dive deeper into numerology. The first thing is, if you haven't done so yet, I invite you to join my Facebook numerology group. You can find the link in the podcast's main page, but you can also find it on Facebook under the name numerology-gps for the soul. Another thing is, if you wish to get a numerology reading, something I highly recommend for numerology lovers, please feel free to contact me through my website link. It's again provided in the website, sorry, in the podcast description and also in the um, episode description. Next, if you want to study numerology in a more methodical and self-paced way, I really suggest you check out my uh, online numerology course. Uh, If you're hearing this podcast to date, the 31st of August, 2022, there's still an offer going on. You can get it for like a really big discount. So go ahead and um, check my Facebook group. You're going to see all the information there. And lastly, I really recommend joining uh, to my newsletter on my homepage. Uh, If you want to get further numerology education, spiritual guidance, and also kind of special perks that only my newsletter subscribers get. Good, my friends. After this introduction and invitation, let us dive right in. Number six. So when we think of number six, or for those of you who have already read some numerology materials or maybe practiced numerology for a while, you know, number six is very often perceived as this sensitive, caring, loving, parental number, right? Like a giver, a provider, a nourisher. And in, indeed, it really is. Number six knows how to find harmony. They know how to compromise when needed and to set their egos aside for the sake of a greater harmony. They know how to uh, nourish other people emotionally especially, but also physically. Sometimes they're good cooks. They know how to um, support. But very often, the darker or deeper karma of number six is not talked about. And this is, you know, this is uh, typical for numbers that uh, portray such a sweet character uh, very often. We tend to kind of like uh, avoid going into the into those like more uh deep murky waters uh but as i said in the beginning this podcast is about in-depth numerology we have to talk about the we have to you know visit all those uh hidden caverns um that sometimes are not looked at and explore them 
So if you have strong sixes in your chart, this episode is definitely for you. But well, also if you're if you just love numerology and enjoy learning more, then well, this episode is for you as well. So hopefully, many of you are numerologists to be. Uh, hopefully, many of you will become numerology readers yourselves. Um, so yeah, let's let's dive deeper. So we're gonna explore today both the light and the shadow and the deeper karma of of being a six, okay, and what it means. So first and foremost, what's important to understand about like sixes, okay, is that by nature, they are born as very emotional beings. And whatever emotion you share with them, it hits them right at the heart. And I'm talking about both warm and welcoming emotions as well as more sharp and cold emotions. Sixes are sensitive. Their their center is emotional. If you've listened to my episode about the wise number seven, perhaps you know that seven is not, well, I'm not sure I talked about this aspect of seven in that episode, but sevens are more, they, they, their center is not located in the emotional domain, but more in the mental, spiritual domain. But for the, for number six, everything is very much centered around emotions. And that's important to understand because that's the way they feel the world. That's the way they communicate with people. That's the way they uh, bond. You will very often see sixes get insulted or hurt very quickly. Okay. So we're starting to touch about like touch upon like the lighter karma. They tend to take things very personal and very much to heart. Um, so being a number six, you know, you're very, you're highly emotional, you're highly, um, aware of other people's needs and you bond through emotional exchange. And in a sense, being, uh, such a personality, you're going to tend to have higher expectations or higher emotional expectations. So you might tend to give, um, a certain to a certain level or a certain extent, and you're going to expect the same in return. So there's something by nature about six that is very like, you know, reciprocal in their perception of exchange, right? They're not like, if I give, I expect to get something in return. And that's the way I, as a six, perceive building a relationship or or establishing a solid bond. So if something happens in a way that breaks my expectation or doesn't meet my expectation, I can get very easily insulted or hurt. However, as a six, I'm not going to show it necessarily, right? And again, the, the, the karma aspect, I'm going to swallow it very often and keep it like store it in my belly or suppress it. And soon we'll explain what happens when one does that. Now, in fact... I'm going to go as far as say that sixes have a kind of secret emotional etiquette that they expect you to understand without any explanation on their end, right? They have these expectations, as I already mentioned, and their secret emotional etiquette has certain codes that they understand, right? They kind of feel, okay, if I've done that, she should do this, or I've given them that, therefore they should um, reciprocate by doing this. But but they don't tell you, right? As I said, it's a secret emotional etiquette, but they expect you, they still expect you to understand it. So this, of course, often ends up with many painful misunderstandings, Okay, Um, and unnecessary, painful, unnecessary pain. Okay, especially on the side of the very sensitive six. Um, Now, don't worry, I'm not going to leave you only with like (laughs) karma and uh, all kinds of like, I'm not going to just leave you hanging, hanging in there with like um, all these deep uh, insights Uh, and all these revelatory insights of the shadow, I'm also going to talk about like solutions in the end. 
Now, please don't get me also wrong. I'm not suggesting that sixes are like um, so problematic. It's just that this episode is diving deeper into the karma. Sixes are wonderful in so many ways. I mean, really, they're truly caring beings, reliable people, warm-hearted by nature. Very often, being with them is is really nourishing and and they truly think of others they truly consider other people's well-being a lot they they really know how to set themselves aside and boy is that like a quality we need today i mean it's it's really it's 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 touching it's it's it feels safe it gives you a home they really know how to give you like the sense of home there's something so parental something that really takes you under their wing there's so much, you know, beauty that I can, you know, I can just mention, you know, and go on and on. Um, right? They love beauty. They love harmony. Uh, they're also born, by the way, with the gift to create both, both beauty and harmony, physically and emotionally. Like very often you're going to see sixes um, being very artistic uh, and even having like this natural gift with, with, colors and design right very artsy so again many amazing things about the six so just wanted to kind of like say that as a side note so you don't think i i'm i'm just uh as if exposing right the the darkness it's not about that it's about understanding the six and and its karma on a deeper level so all this harmony and all this beauty come at a certain cost. In the name of beauty and harmony, you'll see six uh, suppress everything that is not beautiful. Or in other words, you're going to see sixes suppress all the negative emotions and especially anger. So sixes have like this very strange or problematic relationship with anger. They hate it. <laughs> In other words, they're going to do everything they can to avoid anger. Okay? And here we're going to start to... This is going to lead us to like the deeper layers of their karma, okay? So to kind of like sum it up, I would say that the main karma of number six is A, they are born with a certain inherent pain, a certain uh, emotional pain, a feeling, like a fundamental feeling of unfairness um, of the world in general, but also towards them, as if there's always like something that is unfair, like unjust. Very often it's like inborn. It's it's super interesting. Uh, and the second point is that they harbor immense amounts of anger that can become truly poisonous, okay? So here again, you're seeing, like, I'm diving now into the deeper karma, right? So, like, anger that can really fester and and and, 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 and um, grow into, into real poison, and I'm going to explain. So let's go a little bit deeper. Let's start with the first point. So we, we mentioned this emotional pain from birth. So it's it's as if they feel that very often that like they're they're not managing to get the degree of reciprocation they expect, right? So we mentioned that they give, but they do not receive equally. And for sixes, this this um, equal reciprocation is very important. They have I always say about sixes that they keep that secret notebook that nobody sees where they write down everything they've given and everything they didn't receive. It's like this right being very calculative um but it's it's it it can sound very ugly in some way and in some ways it is but it's also because and it's important to see the positive side or just like the natural side of it they just love to bond by mutual exchange that's the way they understand bonding and friendship but very often it doesn't happen in the way they picture it to. And, and so they get hurt and insulted very often and they definitely bear a grudge. And if it goes like into the deeper karmic ends, they start becoming um, um, too calculative and too accumulative 
of all those grudges, and eventually this can ruin relationships. They themselves can sabotage relationships and can sabotage and ruin friendships, right? Because it's like they harbor this anger, but they, you know, they don't want to show the anger or they don't want to show the pain or they don't want to show what they truly expect of you. But then it kind of like it explodes at a later point in a very ugly way. And so funnily, the number that for many of us numerology lovers represents the, the, the pinnacle of love, of relationship, of togetherness, of, of family, of harmony, becomes the very number that destroys that harmony, ruins the friendships, ruins the relationships. And that's why sometimes people don't understand how come, for example, I'm in like a cycle or a pinnacle six or i'm in a personal year six which is supposed to be like a time where i meet someone that i really love or like i establish deeper connections and and actually the exact opposite happens right like things are relationships are broken i I experience many like fights and, and and disagreements usually when that happens it it is a sign for you that you are functioning on the shadow of number six and that should be like um, a signal for you to to heal, to 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 go and into a, a deeper transformative process. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Mm-hmm. Having said that, let's go to the second point and deepen um, into it. So the second point was anger issues, right? Like harboring anger that eventually becomes poisonous. And so the thing with number six is that like they hide their anger. They just, they will do everything in their power to hide their anger and it will erupt at a later point. And that later point is going to be totally unexpected, A, and B, it's going to be totally out of context. So without any connection to the the event that's occurring, they're suddenly going to explode at you with all the anger they accumulated for the last like three months. And they're going to be super angry and like, snap at you you know it's like suddenly all that you know all that accumulated and suppressed anger is going to explode you know and 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 that's where it becomes ugly because it's not fair right it's 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 it is fair to tell a person at the moment of happening that like you know you you or or just a day later you know what i mean or two days later or a few hours later listen i got disappointed i'm i'm you know you did this or that or this could have been different but if you're not saying anything and you're expecting the person to then listen to you three months later when you exploded them you understand what i'm saying this is when it becomes ugly and if you're a six you probably know that about yourself now let's talk about more extreme cases and that's where the karma is like it's heavier karma now in extreme cases they become a sack of boiling anger and this this anger is just oozing out and 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 um triggered by practically anything i mean they're like a you feel like they're almost like this person where every point on their body like every point in their body or their psyche you just touch them lightly and they're like everything inside of them is triggered like with a lot of anger like something eruptive and aggressive and angry um and this as a numerologist i can tell you this very often shows uh, a case of deeper trauma like a deeper underlying trauma very often like an early childhood trauma um right uh, revolving around the topic of love or or not being loved or 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 our relationship with emotions and so on and so forth and this usually requires a prolonged process of healing and inner transformation okay um and so <laughs> the, what i just described this is funny because it might make it hard to recognize a six sometimes as you wouldn't expect them to be such an angry and aggressive human being, right? We all think of a six. We think of like this tender, warm personality, but sometimes, sometimes you're going to meet people that get extremely angry and extremely triggered by almost everything. So 
you will probably, if, again, if you're like a more experienced numerologist or at least someone who has like a basic understanding and you know the numbers, you're probably going to think, oh, wow, they surely have like an eight or a four that can also be, get more angry or a nine that can get fiery. But actually, perhaps they are indeed a six, a six that is very much uh, out of balance. And when sixes are out of balance in that extreme way that I just described, they're like anger walking on two. It's like, you know, anger embodied. And it can be pretty rough, pretty harsh. Um, so having said all of that, as I said, I'm not going to just leave you hanging there. Let's talk about like the path to healing or at least what the, what people with strong sixes must understand in order to you know, keep themselves in check or stay centered or heal themselves, okay? Balance themselves. So the first thing for you sixes out there and for you numerologists who are going to work with people with strong sixes, the first thing is they must lower their expectations of people and respect that others have different perceptions of giving and receiving, right? Different, different understanding of what that means. Different understanding of what reciprocation means. That's super important, right? Lower your expectations. Let people understand this the way they do. It'll really, you know, spare you a lot of hurt. The second thing they need to learn is to express their needs openly and honestly. And not pretend that everything's okay while slowly building up a grudge that starts to fester if, they, if it's not taken care of, right? Learn to say things in the moment of truth and not three months later. That'll spare you, again, a lot of hurt and the potential sabotaging of a relationship that's dear to you. Three, it's okay and mature to compromise, right? And this is very natural to number six, but not when it comes to your deeper truths. So if you're a six, um, that's where you need to overcome your tendency to compromise and establish harmony like at any price, even at the expense of your inner truth. So that's where you have to draw a line. You can compromise in many places, but when it comes to your inner truth, you must draw a clear line. That's where you do not compromise. That's where you do not compromise. And this should be really an ongoing practice for the sixes among us. Next point, as a six, you must teach yourself to not be afraid of anger or negative emotions. Now, I know this not, might not be comfortable, this not, might not come natural, this might not come easy, and that's all fine. Every number, each one of us needs to practice something. So it's important to find constructive ways to express and transform anger and negative emotions so that they don't accumulate and later on potentially ruin or poison important relationships in your life. So learn to express anger. Learn to not be afraid of conflict. It's okay. I'm not expecting of you to be like a number eight that feels extremely comfortable with conflict and confrontation, but you know, challenge yourself to, to experience confrontation or anger a little bit more so that you get comfortable and you learn to process these emotions. And last point I want you to know as a six that can really help you is if you're one of those that are really heavily triggered, right? That personality that is like oozing with anger, um, where the anger is just spilling out of you and you tend to be a very reactive, very triggered, very angry um, type of six, Please do yourself the biggest favor and stick to a transformational ther therapy for the long run, for the long haul, 
Okay, you need to heal some ancient wounds, some very primal wounds. And that'll take time. And and it's important to, to, to be honest with yourself about that and to and to stick to that. And and you're gonna be extremely grateful for yourself for doing so. So so these are my um these are my advice for um this is my advice for you sixes out there and for uh you numerologists who are supporting a six and for all of us who just wish to learn. So hopefully we learned a lot, you know, more about the deeper and more subtler inner karma of the six. And um I hope that helps you understand, you know. Uh, yourself as a six much better and perhaps your loved uh, ones who have like a six much better. And I also hope as always that this inspires you to learn more about the numbers and and more about numerology and, and really educate yourself about numerology. Great guys, so I'm just reminding you, uh, please, I welcome you to join my Facebook group. As I mentioned, the link, uh, you can find it in the podcast main page. You can also find it on Facebook, uh, Numerology GPS for the Soul, that's the name. Um, if you want to, you know, dive deeper into numerology, get more education, also get more spiritual guidance, I really welcome you to join into my newsletter and, and, and get all the special perks that only my uh, newsletter subscribers get. Um, you can find my newsletter on my homepage and simply subscribe. If you haven't done so yet and you want to get a numerology reading, which I highly recommend to get to know yourself, just contact me through my website link. If you want to study numerology in a self-based way, please check out my self-study course. As I said, to date, but really to date, like the 31st of August, 2022, there's still an offer um, going on until the end of the day, Germany time, um, with like perhaps the biggest, not, not perhaps actually the biggest discount I've really ever offered. So go check it out in my Facebook page and, um, yeah, snatch this offer, have this course and start, you know, become a numerology reader yourself. That's it for today, my friends. I'm, I hope you had fun. Feel free to share this episode. And as always, I will see you in the next episodes. Take care. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, and you want to go deeper into numerology, check out my website, tom-eckert.com. You can also book a numerology reading or even study numerology yourself through my courses. I'll see you in the next episode.